Hello YouTube, this is Depassion, also known as Mikel, and welcome to another No More Side Jobs segment. Uh, it'll be two things. It'll be one, my kooky little fan theory on Charlie McDonald and his <clears throat> and his very strange ability to just influence like a crap load of people. And one of me a crap load less than thirty people, but that's still quite impressive. Just have just a completely devoted cult just like that and they can form a giant mecha that's all kinds of nuts and i'll then reminisce about my my time at university actually i think that'd be quite nice especially since we've just visited destroy university twice in uh in my uh, previous uh, journey to no more heroes three segments so do check those out if you have not it's quite a bit of fun and i do um, I do finally get round to bringing in uh, skits, bringing in these kind of a uh, semi, <laughs> uh, semi fun sort of skits. I've uh, decided to start bringing in just it'll be just a, just a different creative sort of outlet, really. But yeah, so uh, when it comes to Charlie McDonald, I thought a little bit harder about it after after that uh, assassin fight. And it is quite crazy that he's able to have just a following of of, uh, of cheerleaders. They all look the same and they all form a mecha together, like under his, under his influence. Now, what intrigues me the most is the fact that all those cheerleaders are classified in the UAA as an individual assassins. So, one theory of mine is that Charlie McDonald either rampaged up to rank 25 and then decided to just use his handsome man hypnotic powers and charm all these various different assassins into just being like, yeah, I'm just so devoted to you, I'll do anything now. And then it's just chop and crop shop and a bit of cybernetics and other like, weird sci-fi stuff or magic. And then, ta-da! They all attuned to his ability to like form a mecha together and they all pilot it together. I'm... That's nuts. Now that's that's some crazy shit. Just on that base surface level and me just thinking about that just over breakfast this morning. Like something about that is so so trippy. That he's able to just be like, yeah, okay, cool. I just got my whole squad. Cause I'm just I'm so intrigued on how they even got into the assassins' rankings. Like how dangerous is one of those cheerleaders? How dangerous is one cheerleader? That they can even keep their that they can keep their spot on the ranking, and how would Charlie McDonald fight if he couldn't form uh, if he couldn't form Santa Death Parade? Like, who knows? Because we know by the end of the ep we know by the end um, of the fight that uh, the only thing that Travis can use to fight against such a giant mecha is taken away from him. So I'm like, oh, so was it legal for him to do that? Or did or did Charlie McDonald just pop that off just the one time so they couldn't call him out on like a rule change because there wasn't a specific rule that said, yeah, no giant mechas, that's not allowed. Like, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? Um, clones? I guess the very simple answer is just that they're just clones. Charlie McDonald just rampaged up to rank 25 and since there was no one behind him at the time, there was no challenges behind him, he just picked one person, just one devoted person, cloned them, just this super diehard fan of his skills and looks and stuff, just cloned her, and then individually set, individually they all signed up to be assassins in the UAA, and then that's how he just kept his spot. He just kept his rank 25 spot like that. Like, he's got that, ra he's got that 25 number, just blazoned across his ch uh, across his chest. There's not many assassins I can think of. Actually, I don't think there's actually any that have the number that the, their numbered rank specifically on their design. I can't think of any of them. He's like the only one he genuinely prides himself on being ranked 25. He could number 25 could have been such a special number number for him as a American football player, like at his uni. That he's like, whoa. Since since our crownless king, king uh, Travis Touchdown is now gone, why not just hop up the hop up the UAA ranks and specifically keep twenty five? 
It's my lu lucky number, yo. It's rank 25. It's number 25. I gotta keep it. Um. Yeah, I find that interesting, man. That's so interesting. Just it could be anything like that, man. Anything. We'll probably never really know. But I don't know. That's my goofy little theory when it comes to Charlie McDonald. Just one hell of a handsome man. Just got a very surprising sort of area of effect. Like we don't know if that's specifically capped to the number of cheerleaders that he has control over, or if he can just entice and entice anybody. And just, yep, you're one of my followers now. Just because I'm that goddamn handsome and shit. Like, who knows, man? Just that kind of stuff is just... It's fun. It's fun to play around with just fan theories sometimes, you know? Like, it's just fun to do it. Um, yeah, it's an outplayed concept when it comes to YouTube videos, I think. But it's still fun to do. Because it's always, it's always just nice to examine a story and then ask, what if? And then just see where imagination takes you and how true it could stay to the rules and uh concepts and themes of that like fictional world or how well can it like fit and suit that this it's, it's fun to do wifes like that um especially especially works with um stories that there's a lot of questions still lying around in like dragon ball specifically z and super like those are fantastic examples i'd I'd go on a massive tangent, so I'm just going to avoid that as best I can. <laughs> There's so many what-ifs. Like, I think that's a part of the reason why that series is still talked about so much to this day. It's because there's always that big what-if. Um, and, yeah, just how the concept of power levels was even introduced. Like, that especially is just kept, the, kept that train going. Kept the train of uh, Dragon Ball going just for so many years. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> emphasis on Z, baby. Um, yeah, when uh, going back to Charlie McDonald, it's. I feel like in universe, especially that, yeah, he was aware of Travis touchdown before hopping into the UAA. Specifically because for me, the fact that he refers to Travis as Mister Touchdown, like I would not be surprised if we go if we had the chance to go over to Charlie McDonald's room, like his uni dorm room, and he's got a poster of Travis somewhere, and he's like, fully aware of the UAA rankings, and, well, at least to the, well, at least to, like, sort of public appeal degree, let's say, like, for example, no, he's like, yo, Travis, like, rampaged all the way through and got out, and, like, what, what, what could he do? Oh, yeah, he just has beam katana, and he just performs, like, wrestling suplex moves and shit, like, he's, and he's no taku, and then, you know, for some weird reason, he has anime attacks, like, literal moves, like, named after anime attacks like <laughs> and Charlie could have been like well that's crazy that's kind of nutty if he can do it then I can do it too and then that's it like he just shoots off and away and just gradually preps himself throughout uni to then just uh, have a giant mecha and then just absolutely splatter Travis when he gets the chance like <laughs> but who knows who knows I've, I've gone on too long when it comes to Charlie McDonald now onwards to me and uh, my experience of uni um because I studied creative writing uh, for three years. Uh, finished the degree. It was great fun. Um, first year was uh, surprisingly as a hilarious breeze. It was a hilarious breeze. I'm, I'm not saying it's like easy, like absolutely easy peasy, but more often than not, when I look back, I'm like, wow, those days were pretty fun, social, uh, like sociable, and yeah, like I. Like, I did change a lot as a student in the first... A fair bit in the first year. Because um, it's a lot of get, just getting the basics down of, like, oh, yeah, this is how you're going to do assignments. This is how you're going to handle seminars. This is how you're going to handle lectures. And that sort of thing. A lot of it was just practice. A lot of the credits, I believe, didn't really plus up to much for the degree overall for the first year. Because um, you're still just getting into the swing of things anyway. So, it was great fun. Made a lot of friends. Uh, made a lot of people. And it's, it's actually funny enough, the second year, um, I ended up doing way, way more when it came to uni. Like, I was, I was studying way more, I was socialising way more, and 
<laughs> and I was out partying way more in the second year. It's, it's quite strange. It's quite strange, actually, to be like... Because the second year is like kind of make or break when it comes to university. Um, at least in the UK. I don't really know how it works in the US and other places like that. Um, it's like what's got a different educational system for some reason. And it's nuts, man, because... Uh, that was the year I also found out that I can actually do screenwriting. I actually have, well, I have a higher affinity to screenwriting than anything else when it comes to writing. And um, uh, then it, like, it was screenwriting, then it was prose, um, then I think it was poetry. I think it was like in that kind of order. But man, that was like the year like I really, uh, really found out that at least I enjoyed writing for the screen. At least I knew I enjoyed writing for the screen. And for the third year, man, that was, honestly, third year was like the best year because I know what I could, I learned what I could do. I, I was aware of what I can, what areas I can improve in. And it was the most testing year academically for me. And it was, it was, it was fantastic. Honestly, I'm really grateful for the experience and um obviously it's especially testing during the final uh during the final few weeks you got all your assignments you got a hand in but no I, I behaved pretty well uh, when it came to when it came to uh just getting your, my assignments in on time more often than not it i'd either plan it out well enough that i'm like okay actually the second year i came up with this i was like, but, like you know what i'm aim to finish my assignments two weeks ahead of time so then it's just all the easier I have that extra two weeks just to agonize over a creative piece again and then again. And then ta-da, okay, cool. It works out like this. Pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Nice. And then just hand in. Um, I think it was the second year, though. Um, <laughs> early second year. I think we were heading towards... Uh, oh, is that, okay, well, I was absolutely boiling, absolutely roasting. I was sprinting. I had to run the whole way. Actually, I think it's first year this happened. So I was just running late. And when I mean running late, I mean running late. I was running every step of the way to get to uni to hand in the physical part of my assignment in. So I sprinted because I missed the bus. So I sprinted from my house to the train station. So that was, man, that was about 10, 15 minutes of consistently running. And then just about got on the train. Thank goodness, got on the train. Absolutely gasping for breath and shit. And then I was looking at the time. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to have to run the whole way to uni as well. And I was a bit like, oh, wait a minute, maybe there's a taxi. No taxis, so I had to run the whole way to uni. So that's another 20 minutes. <laughs> that's another 20 minute run I had to make. Like a 10, 20 minute run. So that was just awful. Absolutely sweltering. I see my friends Matt and Tom, and they're literally at the other end of the corridor. I'm just sprinting. <laughs> I'm just sprinting the whole way. Absolutely sweltering. Like, I, I literally thought I was just going to melt. Like, absolutely. I thought just that was it. I'm going to be a puddle. I'm going to be a, I'm gonna be a cute little puddle on the floor straight after I hand this assignment in. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, <laughs> my friend Matt will do that scene justice there. Just me just sprinting down the corridor and just, and just sliding into the uh, assignment a little hand-in room because uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much like a... It feels a bit like a postage service that you just go into this little post box room and just, like, you hand your physical assignment in. It's already in a slippery fish and stuff. Uh, but, man, that was... I can't remember what assignment it was for. I, I wish I, I could remember which one is specifically for and just glare at it and be like, yeah, you gave me like a tiny bit of hell. But honestly, it was all me. It was all me, honestly. Me and my poor time management. Uh, I, it's weird because I barely oversleep. I barely oversleep. Oh, I must have just pushed so many different things back. I'm like, nah, it's too much of a challenge. I don't want to deal with it now. To a point in which I'm like, well, got to do it. <laughs> so I'm not just running the whole goddamn way. But, oh, that's hilarious. Yes, overall, that is what uh, uni has done to me. It's turned me into quite a creative person, but with ambition and a bit of discipline behind it as well. Like, as and like the willingness to actually execute and commit myself to projects and stuff. Because um, anyone can have an amazing idea. It's how it is expressed, how it is constructed, how it is told is what makes it a real piece of artwork. I encourage people just to do something creative and just and keep sending your stuff out there, really, and just keep creating. It's, it's a fantastic time. It is wonderful to do. It's therapeutic. 
peaceful, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. Just give it a go. Give it a try. <laughs> Until then, this is Depassion, also known as Mikel. See you on the next journey. Take care.